Welcome to the shop, my friends. Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I have another bucket list build. It's the Witch King's Helmet from Peter Jackson's The Lord of the Rings. Now, The Lord of the Rings is an absolute staple in my shop because when I'm not listening to music, I usually have movies going that I've seen a hundred times that I don't really actually have to pay attention to. It's all like background noise. And The Lord of the Rings is one of those that gets played quite often, especially the extended editions, because that means I have 12 hours of content constantly running, which allows me just to focus on what I'm working on. Now, this particular helmet is extremely iconic. I loved it as soon as I saw it in the movies. And the thing that I really like about this particular project is there's not much that actually goes into the helmet itself. It's three pieces and a bunch of spikes, but what really sells it is the paint job on this one. I'm very, very proud of how this turned out. This is probably one of the most corroded metal looks I've ever got out of foam. And I was able to try some things that I hadn't done before, like using some stone textures on here. And I'm really happy to share all those results and the techniques with you. Now, this helmet is of course made all out of my HD foam, which you can find over at Blick Art Materials. And if you would like to build your own, I of course have a free PDF file over on my website that you can download and build right along with me. So I wanna show you what it takes to put the Witch King's helmet together. Let's go ahead and get started. Here you can see my paper templates and I'm gonna take part A and transfer that onto some six millimeter HD foam. This piece is then cut out using a well-sharpened hobby knife. For the round section at the nose, I rough cut it and then I clean it up with a stone bit. To get the bend in part A, I'm going to start by scoring the back of the helmet down the middle. I then take my rotary tool again with the stone bit and create a V groove on the back side. This groove is going to allow the material to have a crisp fold on the opposite side. To secure the fold in the foam, I'm going to apply some super glue into the groove. After applying a little bit of accelerator, I then press the foam together. This process is then repeated all the way up the back side of the helmet. As my double adhesive method, I'm going to use some Surebonder cosplay sticks to hide the seam. This will ensure that the foam doesn't come apart, but it also cleans up the back of the helmet. Part B is going to make up the sides of the helmet, and this piece is transferred two times onto some 6mm foam. Also making sure to mark the interior lines that I have on the pattern. Once again, using my stone bit, I'm going to carve V channels on the back side of each one of these lines. Just like the middle of the helmet, this will allow all these grooves to bend in on themselves. A heat gun is used to help soften the foam and make it a little bit easier to bend. Just like the middle of the helmet, super glue is once again used to fold each one of these grooves in upon itself. You could use hot glue for this application as well, but I just feel that super glue works a little bit faster. And here you can see once the piece is straightened out, it does a great job simulating the folds that are on the sides of the helmet. Now if you've never done this undercut technique before, you might want to practice on a couple of scrap pieces first. To solidify the grooves and clean up the back side, I'm once again going to use some hot glue. This isn't a technique that I use very much, but the results can be pretty awesome. Now it's time to attach the two Part B pieces onto Part A. Part B is kind of lined up with the back side of the eye, and then the small hook in the front is glued to the nose. Here I'm using a mixture of super glue and contact cement to keep these pieces in place. And at this point, it's kind of cool to see how just three pieces of foam pretty much make up the entirety of this helmet. Now to make the helmet fit you, cut one more piece of 6mm foam and adjust it to your size. To strengthen that section and the sides, I cut a couple of pieces of 2mm foam and glue those to the interior of the helmet. These small strips help make sure that the helmet stays in this round shape. I wanted the bottom of the mask to curve in some, so I glued some strips of 2mm foam to make that happen. These strips aren't a necessity, but they also won't be seen when the mask is worn. To make all the spikes that encircle his head, I'm going to be using some 15mm HD foam round dowels. These dowels are going to be cut into several different lengths that you'll see on the template. Each dowel is then refined on my belt sander. Now if you don't have a belt sander, this process can still be done with your rotary tool. The spikes are then all heat sealed and the smaller ones are cut at an angle. 
These can be super glued to the larger ones as seen here. The back of the larger ones are then cut at an angle so they can sit flush with the helmet. Super glue is then applied to the end of all the spikes. This will help strengthen and reinforce them. To give some additional detail to the front of the helmet, I cut some small slits in the corner of each eye. Then the foam was glued and pushed slightly back to give the eyes a little more depth. Using a smooth sanding drum on my rotary tool, I knocked down sections of part B primarily where they connected to part A. This just gave the transition between these parts an overall better look. At this point I could heat seal everything before moving on. The spikes can now be attached to the helmet, and if you notice on my template there's two different sets. The four smaller spikes will go in the very front and the very back, the longer ones will be used on the sides. Now I didn't include placement of the spikes on the template, and that's because it's all determined by the size of your head. But on the video you can see how they're all supposed to be arranged from front to back. My foam clay is going to be used to smooth the transition and make the welds for each spike. I wet the foam with my finger and then I can apply the foam clay. The water will help the foam clay adhere to both the helmet and the spike. Silicone tip tools are also great for moving foam clay around. I repeated this technique for each individual spike and while it might have taken quite a while, the end result looks great. Using a hole punch and some 4mm foam, I need 4 faux rivets for the helmet. These small discs were sanded with my rotary tool to simulate them being hammered, and then each one could be glued to the sides of the helmet. Using a pencil, I mark where I want the battle damage and the pitting. For this process, I'm going to use a heat tool, and I'm going to make sure to wear my respirator. At each one of these sections, the heat tool is used to not only melt the foam, but to create small pits to make the metal look as though it's corroded. For this process, I tried to match the reference images that I'd located online, but it's your helmet so feel free to do your own thing. And like I've mentioned in the past, this is the type of technique you could easily overdo, so I would recommend to plan it out and have it tell a story. Now I'm going to add the other two rivets to the back of the helmet that I almost forgot about. Textures are going to play a big part in the look of this helmet, so before I prime anything, I want to do the tinfoil technique to the foam. With the helmet now complete, I'm going to apply a layer of Plasti Dip to the surface to help seal it. With the first layer of Plasti Dip cured, I'm going to add some Valspar stone texture to the surface. This product is not added thick. I sporadically spray it here and there. After the stone texture had been allowed to dry, I added two more layers of Plasti Dip to seal it. The textures came out great, and I'm really happy with the overall look. Rust-Oleum Flat Antique Nickel can now be dusted on as a base layer. To smooth the surface, I'm going to add a layer of graphite powder to the entire helmet. This is applied with a shop towel and is buff before adding a matte sealer. I use some Liquitex Mars Black as a wash for the entire helmet. This is applied with a one inch mop brush. A lot of the excess paint can then be removed with a damp paper towel. Liquitex Raw Sienna is going to simulate our rust color. The first layer is applied similar to a wash, with a lot of water and a lot of it gets taken away with a damp paper towel. The second layer has less water and more pigment. This is more strategically placed around the heavy wear and corroded areas. Using a small filbert brush, I can now add paint to where parts A and B meet, as well as around the rivets. Straight pigment with no water is pretty much the final step for the rust. 
This is applied to all the corroded areas, as well as the welds around the spikes. Liquitex iridescent rich silver can now be applied to the surface using a 1 inch mop brush. The big thing to note here is that I don't want to cover up all the rust, I just want to hit the high points. And notice that I'm constantly feathering and rotating the brush to give it a more organic look. This is going to help minimize brush strokes and give it a better appearance overall. This is where spending a little bit of money on some good brushes really comes into play. This one 1 inch mop brush has been used in multiple applications in this painting process. I also start to paint the spikes and for those I add more pigment at the end and then feather it towards the helmet. That way when the light catches them, the spikes are going to be more predominant. As a final pass, once again using iridescent rich silver, I go with a smaller filbert brush and I highlight all of the edges. This brush is also used to help to define all those grooves that I cut into the foam earlier. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together my own version of the Witch King's helmet. And hopefully you guys learned some stuff from this video. I know I did. I was able to try some things that I had never done before and I'm definitely banking those for future projects. And remember, if you wanna build this free templates over on my website, feel free to download those, build your own. And if you are building any of my builds or utilizing some HD foam, be sure to tag me at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD foam.